Once a small Spanish colonial port on the Pacific, Lima is a bustling, overcrowded metropolis of nine million people. Nearly all of its water is piped in from the glacial streams of the Andes. Its abundance, especially for the wealthy, makes it hard to believe that this city was built on one of the driest deserts in the world. For the four million people living in the sprawling shanty towns surrounding Lima, there is no water. One of the things you find is that when people move in large numbers from the countryside into urban areas, uh, frequently the cities aren't well adapted to, to receive these people. There, there isn't the infrastructure of water systems, of electrical grids, of housing stock, of schools and hospitals and things. Pachacotec is a squatter community made of sticks, straw matting, and salvaged bits of corrugated steel. Most come here in search of economic opportunities. But what they really find is a place without sanitation and little access to electricity. Here, drinking water is stored along the side of the road in discarded oil drums. Several times a day, Maria Cortez gets water from a container marked with her family's name. Provided by a private contractor, the cost of water is equal to more than a quarter of her husband's income. But what other choices does she have? Maria and her family must have water to survive. Yet it is in communities like this that the water-starved refugees of the near future will surely be forced to live. Can you imagine what their lives will be like? Especially when the city will have to find enough food to feed hundreds of thousands fleeing from the highlands of the Andes. There's a connection between what happens in the sea and what happens on land. You're dealing with, with poor and uh, sometimes desperate people. And if you take one source of food away, they're gonna find another source someplace else. In Lima, and especially here in Pachacotec, the major source of inexpensive protein is seafood. But at some point soon, the need to feed a new surge of migrants will quickly lead to an environmental tipping point. What is now a sustainable fishery will likely become overfished in a matter of years. Compounding the problem, just a few hundred yards off these popular beaches, Lima's semi-treated sewage pours into the Pacific. And as glacial rivers dry up and the city's population grows, increased pollution will turn local waters into dead zones, devoid of any marine life. When this happens, the people of Lima, like the millions of environmental migrants fleeing from the highlands of Peru, will lose their primary source of protein. What we need now is to address the problems of overfishing and marine habitat destruction. But most of all, we need to immediately deal with global climate change. <laughs> 